everyone and welcome. I'm kind of surprised to be here with you on this, well, I don't know what kind of an afternoon it was. I mean, we were kind of worried I've got an umbrella just in case. Uh, I didn't expect to be up and about again. But I guess the reason I've been called here to talk to you is because this is the 100th anniversary of the establishment of a hospital in Calais. And I worked both at the um, original hospital, which was on South Street, which is called Callis Hospital, and at the Callis Regional Hospital, which was on, which built on South Street. And I understand that to you, old hospital is the hospital I call new, and you have yet another hospital that you call new. I know nothing about the new EST, Callis Regional Hospital. So if I refer to the new hospital, I'm talking about the one um, that was on, originally built on South Street. Um, and before that, we were on Church Street. My name is Frances Hall. I was born Frances Grant. I was born in Patton, Maine in 1917 on August 7th. The Cal's Hospital on South Street started in 1917, so I was born the same year as the hospital started. My parents took me from Aristic County to Bath when, right after I was born, and I lived there for six years and then moved to Callis. So I lived in Callis all my life from the time I was six and was educated in Callis, graduating from Callis High School in 1934. I always wanted to be a nurse, so as soon as I was able, I went off to nursing school at Peter Brent Brigham Hospital in Boston. And I graduated from there in 1940. I was also married in 1940 to Alba Hall, and we moved to Spring Street in Callis, where my mother, Lola Grant, lived. My father had died before that, and we lived there with her for many years. The old Callis Hospital, the Callis Hospital that I knew, when I first came to Callis, as a nurse, I wanted to work in the Callis Hospital on South Street, but there weren't any openings. So I worked as a public health nurse and I worked as a school nurse until I was finally able to get a job in the Callis Hospital. At the time the hospital opened, I'm told there were 25 to 35 beds. But when I went there in 1940, which is when I graduated, 1940 was when I graduated from Peter Van Brigham, so it was after that that I started at the Callis Hospital. There were 50 beds. And at that time, uh, there were, there was uh, many of the doctors much of, had, were away at war. So there was uh, reduced staff and the nurses had to do more uh, duties than we had done earlier because of the, we had to fill in for where we were short of doctors. Nurses gained responsibilities during the war in the absence of the doctors. I did floor duty and then eventually worked myself up to being a head nurse. There are a lot of changes I saw in the nursing career over the course of my lifetime. I was in a nursing career for 40 years. When I went to nursing school in the, in the late 1930s, nurses were trained in a lot of things, not just medical procedures, but also in how to take care of a patient, for patient's physical com comfort generally. So we did learn how to give injections and enemas and how to take blood pressures and uh, um, use a stethoscope. But we also learned things like how to give a bed bath to a patient who was bedridden, how to make a cup of tea properly make a cup of tea because that would bring comfort to our patients. And a lot of those comfort sorts of things that we learned were later turned over to nurses' aides. But I have to say that all through my career, even later when I became a hospital administrator, I always had a lot of respect for those RNs who were not so arrogant about their skills that they wouldn't pitch in when there needed to be a bed made or a bed pan empty. Sometimes I encountered that and it never was a plus for a nurse that was under my supervision. 
Another thing that was different about nursing when I first started was what nurses wore. I learned from a nurse who was a nurse at the Callis Hospital on South Street when it opened and she told me that when they first, the uniforms they wore when the hospital opened were starched white uniforms that went six inches above the floor and the supervisor would measure to see how far above the floor your skirt was to make sure you were following the rules. By the time I went there, we were still wearing white uniforms and many times we had an extra white uniform in our locker in case we had an emergency, had some mishap that required it. I, I will never, I never got used to the idea that nurses wore anything but white. That was a hard thing to get used to. Another very important aspect of early nursing was the cat. Every nursing school had its own cap, distinctive style, whether it sat perched on the top of the head and was round, whether it had sat on the back of the head, whether it was had lace on it or a black band or a white band, there was something distinctive for each and every nursing school and a nurse wore that cap very proudly. I can't say that I was sorry to see that go because it can be very inconvenient sometimes. I still can't imagine not having white uniforms on my nurses. When McCall's Hospital opened in 1917, uh, Dr. Minor, it was open because Dr. Minor, have you spoken to Dr. Minor today yet? No. Well, Dr. Minor decided Callis was big enough and needed a hospital. So he looked around and he saw there was a big Victorian house with a turret and the verandas and um, located on Church Street between where the Baptist Church, Second Baptist Church is, and the city building, which is now a parking lot. And that, he purchased that house from the McNichol family, and that's where we had our first hospital. When the hospital first opened, there had to be a transition from patient care before a hospital to patient care with a hospital. Before the hospital, patient care had been given in private homes by private duty nurses. So when people came to the Cal's Hospital, uh, there was a staff of nurses, but they also would hire their own private duty nurses if they could afford it. Private duty nurses would work 20-hour shifts with four hours off. I have to assume that they got some sleep, maybe when their patient was sleeping. They brought the meals to their patient from the kitchen. And for that 20-hour shift, they were paid $3.50. During the 1940s, when I started to work at the Cal's Hospital, many of the doctors had gone off to war. And when they came back, they had a lot of new ideas. And one of the doctors who came back with new ideas was Dr. Cobb. Dr. Cobb had the idea that we needed to have a medical clinic where we had more than one doctor under one roof, and each doctor would have a different specialty. So he opened, he purchased another old Victorian house on Hinkley Hill, which was known as the Benjamin Young House, and he made that into a clinic. But before long, the, they moved that clinic into the hospital. And in 1948, they reopened that Benjamin Young House as the convalescent and maternity home. Now, in the 1940s, when all the men came back from war, there was a baby <laughs> boom. And that was why they needed more space for the maternity. In that hospital, there were different rooms for different towns that were serviced by the hospital. So if you came from Topsfield to have a baby, you went into the Topsfield room. And if you were from Grand Lake Stream, you would go to the Grand Lake Stream room to have your baby. So the mothers from those towns would have their babies together and then go back, hopefully, with a bond that would uh, persist as their children grew up in those communities. But by the 1950s, it was evident that more than this was needed. And their plans began to expand the Cowes Hospital on South Street. And at first, plans were drawn up to build a brick addition to that hospital. But it was quickly abandoned and decided they needed a whole new facility, not just an addition. So they 
plans were drawn up to build a new hospital, which became the Ca first Calus Regional Hospital just off of South Street. I was on duty on the first day that that hospital was fully operational, which was in January of 1956, and I worked in that hospital for more than 30 years. During that time, I became superintendent of nurses, and eventually I started to take courses in admin hospital administration. I studied hospital administration at Colby College and at Columbia University, and eventually I was named the administrator of the hospital. During the time that I was administrator of the hospital, the hospital grew. I don't know if any of you remember when it had only a, the central building, but there were three wings added to that building during my term as administrator of the Cowles Hospital, and the last wing that was built was named the Hall Wing after me, which I considered a great honor and uh, a, a legacy for my per career as a nurse. But there was more to my life than just my professional life as a nurse, and I feel compelled to share that with you. I. My husband and I moved in with my mother on Spring Street after we were married, and we had one daughter uh, who also became a nurse, Barbara. But we lived in that Spring Street community, which was a very tight-knit community. There were all those kids that were born during the baby boom were in that neighborhood. There were the Duns and the Kellys and the Forsyths and the Churchills and the Chicks and the uh, ooh, I can't even remember them all, but they were a handful. They tormented the neighborhood, but we still loved them. And I was very good friends. The, the mothers were all very good friends. I played bridge with the mothers often three times, three nights a week, and we had coffee every Sunday morning. And Together we shared the successes and the sorrows of raising those kids in that neighborhood. It's hard to believe some of those kids would, one of the, one of the mothers was, would get really angry and I think she did herself in because the boys stole her doorstep again and again so when she opened the door, she had no doorstep. Uh, they set off firecrackers inside of pipes and spread shrapnel all over my barn. They would throw sticks and stones at my chestnut tree to knock down the chestnuts and break windows. I mean, they were always into mischief. But, you know, you wouldn't have thought it at the time. They all turned out pretty good. We had a number of them went to work in the mill. We had one that went into the military and became a Green Beret. We had uh, a tele telecommunications engineer, uh, a doctor, a lawyer, a nurse, so they turned out okay. And I like to think that they were raised not just by their families, but by that whole neighborhood, which was so close and special at that time. So I had to say that because that was an important part of my life. And I may have been asked to be here just as a nurse for the hospital, but I wanted to share what Callis was like growing, living there as an adult and a parent and a member of a community. So if you have any questions or comments, I would be more than happy. I would be thrilled to have you share them with me. Uh, but I guess I've talked long enough. <laughs> so I'll let you go. Thank you.